It is September, and uh, our first guest is a great Philly. Uh, played on that 2008 World, or excuse, excuse me, 1993 crazy team, that wild team in 1993. Uh, career batting average, 274. He knows how to hit. Absolutely. That's why he was a hitting coach for, but, and for the World Series 2008. Yeah, for, yeah. So let's go to the Barb Charlie Davidson Sports Hotline and welcome into the locker room former Philly outfielder Milt Thompson. Good morning, Milt. Good morning. How you guys doing? Hey, Milt. We're like we're we're all, we're all right. We're doing okay. We, we could have been be- doing a little better if the Phillies would have won last night. <laughs> uh, hard to explain. You know, they, they they play teams that they should beat. <laughs> right. and, uh, it's it's just hard to explain. I I'm still uh, trying to figure out how they got swept by Arizona. <laughs> yeah, right. No, let me ask you a question about um, playing down to a opponent. Does that is that is that a real thing to say in baseball? Like when you play down to an opponent in football or or, or uh, basketball, maybe hockey. But does that does that happen in baseball in the majors? Oh, most. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I remember being the hitting coach uh, all those years and. We'd go into Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh wasn't very good back then, and we'd, we'd find a way to lose a couple games to them. I can't even explain it. You know? Well, what is it? Is it you, you you're taking them lightly, Milt? Or is it, you, you have a different approach at the plate? I don't get it. I, I think you just figure out you just show up and you're going to beat them. And, you know, sometimes it, it backfires on you because those guys, you know, they're professionals too, and they go out there and they're trying to win. It's just that, you know, right now their team's, you know, not that good, but. They, they fight every night. So if you go in there and you don't have your A game and you kind of lax, uh, you'll end up losing. Milt, how does a team like the Philadelphia Phillies, they can smell it. They're two games out in the in the division. They're two games out of the wild card. They're, they're playing meaningful games in September. You fly down to Miami where this year you're, you're going into the last night game, they were 7-6 and six against them. But you go into Miami, you know a team that's like, they, 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 I don't know, they're way under five hundred. Uh, what are they, 50, 56, 79, no shot at making the playoffs. There's nobody in the stands. How do, you, how do you lose to a team? There's no enthusiasm, Dan. How do those guys play? How do they beat the Phillies? Well, you know, it's always nice when you don't have a very good team to be spoilers. So that and that fires teams up that don't have a chance to make the playoffs. Their job is to try to make sure you don't get to the playoffs. So that's very important that you – when you go into the places like that, you got to understand that they, they're trying to, you know, uh, keep you out of the playoffs. So it's, your focus has to be on, you know, going out and scoring runs early and finding a way just to dominate the game and win. Milt, do, they have to, do the Phillies feel pressure where the Marlins, like Scotty McKay just alluded to the fact that they're just out there having fun, they're just kicking around where the Phillies might, might be gripping the bat a little tighter? Does that happen? Well, you know, whenever you get to a point where you, especially in the playoffs, things, you know, magnify a whole lot. Any little mistake or anything means a lot. So you put sometimes you kind of you put some extra pressure on yourself. But that's the whole key with with good teams is that you just relax and everybody do their part. I remember in 2008 uh, when we were playing Tampa, and the series was one one, and we came home and uh, it was raining, so we were playing inside, and we're in the cages and. I pulled all the guys together and I said, okay, who wants to be the MVP of the World Series? They looked at me. I said, you know what? If we just do, you just do your job, do what you're capable of doing, and let's play as a team, we'll become world champions. And that's exactly what we did. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Mel. Hey, Mel, you got drafted by Atlanta in 79. You came into the Bigs in 84. And your first two years in the Bigs with Atlanta, you batted 303 and 302. And then you get traded. Did, were you like shocked by that whole thing that you you know you were you were batting over three hundred and all of a sudden you're moved to the Phils? No, I wasn't really shocked because the second time I came up with the Phil, with the um, Braves, all I did is pinch hit. I never started, so I was happy to go somewhere where I got an opportunity to play. Right. Well, you got traded with Steve Bedrosian. Bedrock. His for, son's playing on a team. For Ozzie yeah. and and Pete Smith. That's a great trade for the mm-hmm. Phils. You know. Um. <laughs> You know, you uh, you average two seventy four for your career, and being a batting coach today, the the league average is two forty two. What has changed in the game for the batting averages to drop like that? Uh, the approach to hitting, everybody's trying to hit home runs. <laughs> you okay. know, but, but the launch they're they're talking about launch angle, but what they don't understand is that me and me and Charlie had this discussion about a month ago. 
Um, where we used to swing down and create lift, we finish high. These guys right away are dropping the back shoulder trying to get the ball up in the air. And so with the pitchers of the day, the, the, the way they throw, if they can keep the ball up in the zone, guys are going to struggle getting hits. We're talking with former Phillies outfielder Milt Thompson, of course, Milt coached the 2008, won a World Series with the 2008 Phillies teams. Milt, the 93 team, we, we've talked about this several times on the show. <laughs> that was one of, even though you guys, you know, obviously lost the, the World Series to the Toronto Blue Jays, that team is still beloved just as much as the 2008 Phillies, the 1980 Phillies. What's, what is the, your perspective, because you played on that team, and you coached the 2008 team. Why, why do we love that team so much? Because we weren't even expected to do anything. You know, <laughs> we went from last place to first. And the thing is, and I, I've, I've, you know, thought about this over the years, you know, we were the only team in baseball to have three platoons. You know, it was wow. me and Inky in left field. Right. Um, uh, Wes and Izzy in right. And Mario Duncan and, and, and Mickey at second. And we were unselfish. We knew our roles, and we just went out and played, and we had fun. You know, we had Darren as our rock, our leader. You know, you got Crucky and, and Dude. And just, <laughs> we just had a, you know, <laughs> we just had a, a, a team of characters that just came together and were on a mission to find a way to win, and, and that's what we did. Sounds like Spanky and our gang. Yeah, there, that, I, I mean, that was just yeah. such a fun team to watch. Milt, what's it like, like, in the clubhouse? Like, like what's it like? In September, when you know that you're, you know, you're playing good baseball, you're in the pennant race, or you're in first, and you're trying to help, uh, you know, keep the lead. What's it like, the, the atmosphere, what, with the the intensity? What's that like? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's always nice when you're playing for a spot in the playoffs and, and stuff. And you know, it was it was weird because I think it was me and Crucky that had over a, a thousand games in Major League Baseball without even getting the playoff experience. So it was. Uh, it was some kind of ride, man. It was it was unbelievable, you know. Every, everybody wants to blame Mitch, but let me tell you something. <laughs> you know, this guy was phenomenal all year. I mean, I don't know how he did it. <laughs> you know, smoke and mirrors, but he always found a way to, to save games for us until that, that, you know, one pitch to Joe Carter, which was technically a really good pitch, a bad pitch to him, <laughs> you know. Hey, 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 Mill, let me ask you a question. When when uh, when – Kurt Schilling put the put the towel over his head. Oh, what, what was that like? What, how was that? Because you guys had like an open locker room. I'm sure every guys discussed everything. What what was that like for for I guess both with everybody in the team and, the, and Kurt Schilling and, and Mitch? How was that handled? Oh, we we weren't very happy with that because <laughs> you know we were we were some kind of team and we we really pushed and and and, and pulled for one another. So. That incident is one that we are not happy about at all as a team, you know. I can imagine. You know, Billy, it's funny. I ran into Milt at Don Devlin's Coach Wilk Golf Tournament the other day, and, and when I said I introduced myself, and, and I said, uh, Milt, what are you doing today? And he goes, I'm retired. And I never <laughs> saw a smile so big in my life. He was, he was so – it was like he just hit the lottery, too, on top of it. You know, he was happy. But, Milt, you got four daughters. So you're surrounded by five women. Did your daughters follow in your footsteps and play sports? No, 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 no. I'm an empty nester now. Uh-huh. Ah. <laughs> He's really retired. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, Did your daughters follow in your yeah, footsteps and play field. sports? No. Uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, last one, I skated. That's about it as far as close to being sports. <laughs> but, uh, you know. 43 years, you know, 43 years in professional baseball, living out of a suitcase for 43 years, wow. it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sure. it's just nice just to be able to wake up when you want and, you know, exactly. do whatever you want to do. So. And play a lot of golf. Definitely not complaining about that. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I play with – I play with I, I saw you at the uh, at the Cherry Hill PBA at the Pennsylvania Country Club earlier in the season, and you were with your buddies – uh, you were Mickey with Mickey Moore and Dee and Tita Green. We've had we had Tita Green on a couple weeks ago. You guys, I'll tell you what, you guys are great around the community. Uh, you know, talk to everybody. I, you guys were interacting. It was it was great to see people in Philadelphia. Love you, man, because that that '93 team and the you obviously were the coach of the 2008 World Championship team. Milt, man, it's like you're walking on water in this town. <laughs> I, I mean, when you talk about our guys, I mean, next uh, next month we have uh, Darren's uh, golf tournament. 
So we'll all be together again. We find ways to, to get together. We have fantasy camp in Jan- in January. So, you know, we're, we're a brotherhood that uh, I don't think is going to ever break us up, you know. So, so you know, like Fred, Shiro, Fred Shiro said that, the late great Flyers coach, win tonight, walk together forever, and you guys certainly are. Mm-hmm. Mill, listen, real quick before we let you go, um, what do you what do you what do you think going down the stretch with the, with this Phillies team? I think they're going to make the playoffs just because of I look at their schedule. I mean, if they just <laughs> you know you got Baltimore, you got you, if you just go out and just score early and dominate, they should they should have a problem because really their schedule is definitely in their favor. They just have to go out and, and play every day, come come to work ready to play. Well, Mill, listen, man, we really appreciate you taking time to uh, call in here on a Saturday and uh, talk a little Phillies baseball, reminisce with us. We certainly uh, enjoyed watching you play and coach, and thanks so much for, for calling in. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. There All he right, is, Mill Thompson on the Barb's Harley-Davidson Sports Hotline.